Hi everybody, Key Chip with Contentment, and uh, been a little while since we put a video out. I think while the weather's nice, this is probably gonna gonna be how it has to be uh, because I'm so busy that um, you know, I, and and for as long as it takes to put a video together, and uh, not even you know even considering the poor quality of videos that we put out, I guess you'd say it still takes a while to edit these and stuff like that. So. Um, but I thought I'd bring you up to speed on what's going on out here. In the past year and a half, uh, well, let's go back two years. In the past two years, uh, we've been kind of sidetracked from, um, you know, actually building a homestead out here by actually homesteading, if that makes sense. <laughs> what I mean by that is, those of you who followed our channels for uh, our channel for a while will remember that the whole reason we wanted to get into homesteading is because we want to be closer to the things that sustain us. Not just talking about food, uh, but everything. And um, that means relying less on our wages to pay other people to do things for us like most of the world does and to be able to do more of those things for ourselves. And one of the things that we have been able to do a lot of for ourselves in the past two years is fix equipment and fix vehicles and things like that. Um, and you know, that's, that's all part of homesteading for us anyway. Um, you know, if you can fix your own things and you don't need to pay somebody else to do it and you can be closer to the things that sustain you, you know, like vehicles. Uh, so just to give you a, you know, a little rundown, Dinah is finally, I pray, finally in a position where she can do some good, some more good work for us. Now, we used Dinah a year and about a year and a half ago to cut out the house pad for the house and, you know, stuff like that. Then, since then, it's just been a world of issues. Um, you know, with the uh, thing having fuel delivery problems, uh, this steering, uh, uh, steering cylinder right here leaking. And when I say leak, I mean fluid just pouring out of it all over the landscape stuff like that and you know Dinah's still not in a perfect condition but she's in good enough condition now uh, to be able to use her for stuff you can see we've done some clearing here uh, using Dinah we use Dinah to shape up uh, our mile and a half long mile and a quarter long driveway uh, uh, all the way down to the county road stuff like that we also uh, have done a fair bit of work to Dumpy because we needed to make sure we could get Dumpy up the mountain to collect lumber. And in fact, uh, he has been. You can see by the lumber piles over there in the distance, I hope. Um, but uh, you remember we did the rear end brakes and bearings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we got brakes, and now uh, she's actually street legal with a working horn, and uh, we got the lights fixed up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, carburetor rebuilt, and what else? I don't know. Just odds and ends, you know. Just making sure that uh, Dumpy is ready for for what we need. And um, now, as you can see, the Dodge. The Dodge has spent about half of the last year, and I do not joke when I say that, I'm not exaggerating, that Dodge truck has spent half of the time in the past year at the dealership getting stuff fixed on it. And when I say, I mean just all kinds of things, uh, power steering pump, and then, and, then the, and then after that, the whole front of the engine, all the pulleys, air conditioner uh, clutch, Every pulley on the front of the engine was just replaced. Last week, Robert said there's a bad vibration. 
So I drove it, and sure enough, the carrier bearing, which supports the drive shaft about midway uh, underneath the truck, uh, was worn out. And we had just replaced that a year and a half ago. Um, as you can see, there's some tires in the back. We're getting ready to put new tires on there. Uh, the front end of that was just redone. New upper and lower control arms and uh, all that good stuff. Uh, brakes were just done on the front, but now they need to be done on the back. Um, now, I do the brakes, so that's not a big deal. But, but the carrier bearing, I just replaced it again because I, I'm so sick of that thing being at the dealership for a month just to replace a bearing. Um, when I can do it myself and pay less for the part than I would have for my copay on the warranty and have it done. So that's done. While I had it, I thought, you know, it's time to do a transmission service on this. So I pulled the transmission pan, drained the fluid, and replaced the filter in there. When I put it back, now I have a leak. So I have to climb under there again and do it. Do it again. Uh, this time with some kind of silicone sealant or something to make sure it doesn't leak. But I hope and pray... Oh, the Ford. Um, you've been keeping up on some of the things we've got going with the Ford. I mean, I just replaced two fuel pumps in the Ford and the computer in the Ford uh, truck uh, what else um, had to repair the dash because these bumpy roads out here uh, literally broke the dash um, and so I had to fix that um, I don't know just there are a myriad of things that we have had to address with equipment out here um, uh, you remember the the tiller, uh, the, the rototiller that we had out here that I just rebuilt the engine on. Well, the engine did fail. It wasn't that I didn't think that rebuild would work and it didn't. So I said, forget it. And I just went and got a, a brand new engine, you know, at, at uh, Harbor Freight, stuck it on there because we're going to need that not just for gardening, but also for digging our foundation uh, out here for the house. So there's that. Uh, I, I, anyway. There is just a ton of stuff that we have had to do out here on the property. And, you know, I guess my attitude about that has changed. Because I have been complaining about it for the past year and a half. I mean, when is this going to end? You know, when is it going to end where we can actually get busy, uh, you know, on the homestead, building the homestead? And, you know, I was back looking at some of the early videos we did and... It just occurred to me is this is what I wanted. This is what we wanted. We wanted to be closer to the things that sustain us, including automobiles. So, you know, um, it's all part of it, I guess is what I'm saying. If I can encourage anyone out there who's, who's having frustrations about homesteading or living off grid or anything like that is that depending on what you choose, and, you know, we're trying to choose all of it. Um, this is what it's about. It's, it's how it's going to be. So get used to it. And now do I enjoy crawling in that sand right there and getting grease all over me and having sand stick to the grease and it be all over me? No, I can't stand it. It is, it is annoying. <laughs> but um, got to be done. So... That's my goal today is get that finished up. And then we'll get some tires on it. And hopefully, hopefully, I, pr I pray. And please pray as well that we will have no more mechanical issues uh, with vehicles so that we can get on with things and actually get to building. Because, man, it is late in the year. And uh, we have about, we have about till Thanksgiving to... Uh, to meet our building goals for contentment this year. Um, don't know if we'll do it now, but we're gonna try our hardest. Among those are to build a retaining wall right here along this, uh, all the way over there, about uh, all together, about 150 feet of retaining wall. Uh, and then after the retaining wall's in, to dig a basement right about, right about there um get that formed up and poured and hopefully covered um before 
Thanksgiving or by Thanksgiving. It may take till may take till Christmas. I don't know. It may take longer. Just don't know. It depends on vehicles and, you know, our stamina and uh, things like that. So that's uh, that's that's the deal. Heck, while I'm at it, let me show you what's going on in the greenhouse. Let me show you what a disappointment that's turned out to be. <laughs> Want to show them, Reba? Come on. You show them, too. Come on, this way. Come on. Let's go in the greenhouse. Oops. I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay. Well, uh, the the number one plant that we've been able to get going well is this bottle gourd plant. <laughs> of all things, you know, something we can't eat. Um, it is producing a billion bottle gourds. Uh, I mean, there are just there are too many to count on here. I don't know, 75, something like that. But they get to a certain size and they die. They don't get to a, a very big size. See, here's one. Got to that size and crooked. And uh, I don't know. we're watering faithfully every day, stuff like that. But for whatever reason, they're just not getting very big. Of course, I've never grown a bottle gourd before, so I really don't know much about these plants. Cabbage, it's, you know, getting cooler weather, and it's starting to, the little cabbage heads are starting to tighten up in there, so that'll be good. But every once in a while, I'll pull these outer leaves off and feed them to the chickens. They like that. Uh, this is the um, Brussels sprouts. They've never gotten any bigger than that. Um, this is broccoli. It's never gotten any bigger than that. This is cauliflower. Um, the ones that, you know, lived, that germinated, that lived, uh, that's as big as they've gotten. This is basil. You saw this basil in an earlier video. It was really tiny then. This is as big as it got and it bolted early. Tomato plants. We had two tomato plants. We planted others, but they didn't germinate. And, uh, so there's a cherry tomato and there's a regular tomato. I forget what variety this is called. But as you can see, the plants look really peaked, really awful. And they do produce fruit, and it does ripen, but I, otherwise the plants look horrible. Um, this, <laughs> this is a surprise. You know, uh, Robert found this transplant uh, plant, I think at the store or garden center or something, jalapenos. And we have several jalapenos on here that are growing and looking good. So that's a bright spot. Here's a blueberry that needs to be planted. But that is our whole production this year. It's just terrible. Um, we're finding out that the soil is soil is really alkaline. So we've tried our best, you know, to amend it um, with what we can with, you know, wood chips and sawdust and, um, you know, some other additives, all kinds of stuff. But it is so alkaline. We have some learning to do there. Rescue. See, Roscoe is hanging out in this little hole at the back of the house um, because there's a, a bunny rabbit who lives underneath there. They're always trying to get him. This is a roadrunner coyote kind of thing that they'll never catch him, but they try. Okay, this garden area. We were thinking it'd be nice to plant something here, but with the terrible success we had in the greenhouse, we decided that we're going to throw as much organic material on here. So we've got some straw, we've got wood chips and sawdust, we've got bags of peat moss, that kind of thing that we're going to throw down here, till it under, now that I have a working tiller, <clears throat> and uh, we are going to uh, let it sit over the winter. And hopefully, hopefully it will produce or it will give us some better soil so that we can we can try that but that's an update on us right now uh i'll try to have more videos out soon but uh as you can see i'm busy so i get to go climb under that thing now and fix it so i'll catch up with you guys later Bye.